culture too. Of course, the most famous is Stonehenge. So it's out in the Salisbury Plain. If you see from the air, from Google Earth, you can see that's those series of ditches around the outside. So the standing stones of Stonehenge are just the center part. This has been excavated and reconstructed. The white dots there are the holes for the post. So in your mind you have to imagine a fence of large posts all around the outside too. So, Stonehenge. At one time it was a complete circle, stones. The stones that were there have been removed and used in other projects. It's only quite recently that it's been seen as a, you know, a heritage to that part, and they've preserved it. It'd be very difficult to go steal one of the stones now. We could try. I think they weigh, lots, you know, they weigh a lot, so it'd be difficult. Plus the druids would probably get us, so we better not. They, when they were doing some of the reconstruction on it, they noticed that underneath the stones here are dowels. They're, they've cut holes into the rock, and there are actually uh, um, metal um, rods that connect the stones together, tie them together. So it's, it's fairly complex. As a matter of fact, the stones came from a long ways off, hundreds of miles away. So that's led to the theory that... Um, Ancient astronauts did this because he asked the question, how did they get these stones in place? And it must have been UFOs, some extraterrestrial race that came and helped them build it. That was popular back in the 60s and 70s. Most people now that believe they just did it using a lot of elbow grease and, st and uh, sand ramps and things like that to put it in place. Pretty clever. People back then could do that. But anyway... It's what it looks like to walk around Stonehenge, look up at the stones. Exactly what its purpose was for. Um, some believe it was some kind of temple to worship the pagan deities. Others believe it was in a, some kind of as, uh, astronomical observatory for measuring the movement of the sun, the moon, and the planets. But I think most would suggest that it's probably a little of both because in the ancient world they didn't make that distinction. Today we believe uh, that our universe is like a big clock that runs according to natural laws, but that's a fairly recent phenomenon. If you believe that's the way the world is. If you go back several hundred years, you get to a time when people believed that the universe was actually controlled by the gods, represented the wills of, will of the gods. Therefore, to observe the movement of the sun, the moon, the stars, was to observe the will of the gods. If you believe the Bible, that's what you still believe because the Bible's pretty clear about that, right? God didn't create a big machine that he wound up and it's going. The Bible's pretty clear that everything that happens happens according to God's will and his principle, even things holding together because of God's will. So we're really quite uh, ancient in our theology if we think about it. I teach a class called Natural Science. In about the first five or six years I taught that class in the syllabus, it said that we are going to study the natural laws that govern the universe. And then I realized that I don't believe that. <laughs> so I took it out. But you can see how easy it is for that mechanistic type of worldview to sort of seep in. And so there's really not a distinction between astronomy and theology. In their mind, it was both. This is a photograph taken at Stonehenge during the winter solstice, which is the shortest day of the year. And what's interesting is that the winter solstice, when you stand in the center of, the, uh, of Stonehenge and you look out toward the hillstone, the sun sets almost directly on top of the hillstone. And so that would suggest that it's some kind of observatory. It's meant to measure the winter solstice at least. And they've, you know, they've looked at uh, the development of Stonehenge by using po uh, pottery types and carbon-14 dating to try to get a handle on when different phases went up. And this is sort of a, the, their best guess at how it developed through time. And you can see, even in its very early stages, before there were any stones, there were just ditches and posts, you still see that relationship to the hillstone. 
and the winter solstice. Sunrise, summer solstice, and winter solstice. So this just shows how it would develop through time, becoming more and more complex. As they, they wanted to measure more and more astronomical events, and it was associated with the will of the gods. We don't think about it much today, but as the days get shorter, if you believe that the shortness of the days is mirroring the will of the God, then there's always that question, are the gods going to change their mind and make the days longer? Are the days going to continually get shorter where eventually it's all nighttime? It's, it, there's no daylight. And so they recognized that at a certain time of the year is whenever the gods got together and decided. That was the winter solstice. December what, December 25th, 26th, something like that. Is that right? When is the winter solstice? It's the 21st. It's the 21st? And so they, they're, um, they begin a festival from the 21st to the 28th, I think, somewhere, something like that, because they know it's during that time frame when the gods are going to decide and it's going to switch. You're going to go from shorter days to longer days. And so they would have a festival and they would petition the gods to give them another year, to give them more time. And so you can see how important that is, right? To get it right, because you don't have the festival at the wrong time. You want to make sure it's at the right time. And so they think that's the reason for Stonehenge, is trying to, to, to organize those festivals when they need to be, when, it's, when the decisions are being made among the gods. Stonehenge is not the only monolith in Salisbury. Just to the north, there's another called Avebury Stone Circle. It's actually much larger than Stonehenge. You see? The stones that were in the center have been taken away now and probably used in nearby houses and farms. But you can still see the outer ditch. So I don't want you to think that Stonehenge is the only one. It's there's lots of these areas. If the Stonehenge was used, like you said, for uh, the festival to tell the time and all that, uh, then why would they build another one so close? Probably because evidently there were larger communities and they uh, built their own. That's very common human nature, isn't it? The uh, village down the road has their hinge. Our hinge is going to be bigger and better. So it may have just been, it's like uh, today it's like high school football teams, I think, in Texas. In the Middle Ages, it was cathedrals, build, build your cathedral. So that would be my best guess is that they wanted their own, their own stone hinge. Do you see the standing stone? Do you see the ditch still there? Part of the ceremony. <clears throat> 